were closer than family. As children playing together, sharing our secrets and hopes, a day would feel like a year stretching out before us. We had vowed to be friends for life. My friends, my family. It's been 25 years since they've all been together. It was my funeral. Oh my God. God has big plans for you. <laughs> He's gonna be up all night. Big plans. <laughs> Why did she keep coffee in her bedroom? Don't, don't, don't. don't. It's ashes. Her ashes. God! Ah! I found my life's work. It's a second chance. What did we say? We will get there. We'll get there. We will get there. We will get there. If you could be born a man, would you be? No. It'd be nice to be able to pee standing up, though. <laughs> I think you're the only older woman I know that still wants to have sex. It makes me feel so great. And why wouldn't everybody want to do it? You have a conviction that at a certain age, you should have it all together. But then you get older, and you keep moving the goalpost. There is a land of the living and a land of the dead, and the bridge is love, the only survival, the only meaning. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am so excited to have three amazing artists with me here today. I have lovely and talented director of this film that we're going to be talking about today, Chantilly Bridge, Linda Yellen, and two of the stars of the film, Jill Eikenberry and the legendary Patricia Richardson <laughs> with me here today, guys. Ladies, I want to talk, I want to start with you, Patricia, because you're the new kid on the block with this film. This is actually a, a, a pseudo sort of sequel to uh, Linda, your uh, previous one of your previous films, Chantilly Lace, if I'm correct, it is a sequel. <laughs> yeah, which uh, which was a Sundance firebrand when it came out back in the day, and really set a tone for female empowerment films that I think sort of took off after that, specifically in the mid '90s. Can you, uh, Patricia, can you talk about joining this cast of characters as a new character to the uh, game? Yes. Well, no, Patricia, Patricia. It was heaven. I mean, I was so lucky. I couldn't believe Linda was asking me. I was just like, who is in this? Oh my gosh. And I saw the original film and loved it back then. And I, I, didn't, I need to see it again. Gently nice. Uh, but I was a newbie and I was nervous, a little nervous. Um, but, you know, my character is also a little uncomfortable because these are my sisters or my sister's friends and not mine. And so I'm kind of finding my way plus dealing with the grief of losing my mother. And uh and, and as the film went along, we all shared a house together. We uh bonded. These women were so wonderful to me and we my character becomes more comfortable as I did. And um you know it was just a feast for an actor to get to be fed. I mean it was just uh, it was fabulous. I was sorry it was over when it was over. When we stopped after the shooting I love that answer. And Linda, for you, how was that coming back to this this world that you created way back in you know the '90s, which was a great decade, if I do say so myself? <laughs> uh, what was it like to come back all the way to these characters and re revisit them and, and and sort of learn more about them as you were crafting the script? Well, the first thing was physically getting everyone back in the room together it was so emotionally moving, stimulating heartwarming and I tried to shoot as much as possible in sequence so that to bring Patricia into the group we had the first shots were a little more awkward and uh, for her character which was right for her character and everybody amazingly went right back into who their characters were and the dynamics uh, as if no time had passed at all uh, and uh, we kind of thought, even though there were enormous challenges, we were shooting instead of beautiful Sundance in summer, we were shooting uh, at the very top of New York State in the dead of winter, with wind chills of minus 20 degrees and ice floats and stuff. And it, but we, it, it all seemed to evaporate just because we felt so proud of the content and what we were trying to say for 
a new look at women, you know, three decades later. What now? How can we be at the cutting edge now as we were at the cutting edge 30 years ago? But thank you for recognizing that. I am so glad you did that because as a good journalist, I'm going to say my follow-up question was for Jill. Your character, Val, is the perfect examination of looking at women's issues 30 years later. She's going through something in private that we don't know about until the end of the film and the other characters don't know about until the end of the film. What was it like having to get into that headspace, quite literally, and playing that character again, but in a much different way? Well, I've been going through it with my mother. She was living across the hall from us for about five years, and I was I was watching this this decline, uh, which was really tough. And I wanted to explore what it felt like from the inside, if I could, you know. And so that was that, that was really important to me, and ended up being, um, you know, really moving to me. And I'm, I'm so glad I was able to do it. But I also had all these wonderful actresses who were. Um, you know, as Patricia said, take, they were taking care of me. I could feel like I was being taken care of. And, I, and, and my relationship with Ali Sheedy, who had been my, uh, you know, my sister in the first one, who still was, um, even though it was just on the phone, there was something so, so incredible about the turn that we took together because I had always taken care of her. And then at the end of the movie, um, she's taking care of me and you know I think that happens that happens as people get older you know you you're the caretaker and then suddenly you need the help and I think that that was a, um, a theme that I didn't even know we were going to explore but I think it was really an important one. I, I, I loved how you put this together with the script and how, how you talked about women and your other one of your other new characters played by Najee Sky. Uh, Adizama is uh, an, examines modern women's issues while talking to these other women who have sort of been through it and it sort of, I guess, co uh, coalesces and, and mirrors that these issues have always been the same and, will, and uh, for the last 30 years. Can you talk about that a little bit and how you were able to sort of craft that and make that make sense? Well, yes, you know, it was amazing. I had not, even though I had gone through it very fast to pull footage that I wanted to use, I hadn't really sat back and watched Chantilly Lace. And it's incredible how the issues have not changed from then to today. And Najee, I wanted the, the character of a young uh, uh, woman who was very headstrong, uh, sure of herself, dealing with life today uh, in 23 as a young woman, uh, with a certain arrogance, uh, looking at these older women as like, well, what, what do you know? <laughs> and by the end, a certain melding where we learn from the youth and the youth learns from us. And that's the greatest gift in real life that I think we can do. So on cinema, if, if it works. And we also, we also sh share the shock of what, what's happened to her. Uh, and all and many of us have that same history, so that's really an interesting. That was a surprise. We didn't know that she was going to come up with that. Yeah. So when we did it, and we we're improvising on it. We had no idea that that was coming. Yeah, of course. I, I got to say, I did she, she she directed the. Yeah. What were you? Saying? I couldn't imagine it. Obviously, as a man, I couldn't imagine having to go through that. Um, and I would never want to put a woman through that. So I'm glad that you guys put that on film so that uh, you know men like myself can can sort of learn like. These things don't change, and we as animals need to change who we are. Mm -hmm. I only have a few minutes left. Uh, so, uh, Linda, Jill, uh, Jill, can't forget that. You're both Jills now today. I know you're calling me Jill and her. <laughs> uh huh, exactly. You know why. Uh, uh, can you give me an elevator pitch as to why people need to check out your film uh, when it does come out? Because there's nothing like it out there. And you want to see real people and the best acting anywhere. This <laughs> is the movie to, to see it. The performances are exquisite. And the message is an important one to take home. And you can laugh a lot. And we, I, all, and we, all, need to, we all need to be talking about friendship now. We all need to talk about connection now. Because so many of us have been so unconnected. That is such a good point. And so this movie is all about that. It's about the importance of it. Yeah. I love that answer because you're right. You will laugh. You'll probably cry a little bit, but mostly you'll just have a great time with your friends. And if, you, if you're if you a fan of the original film, it'll feel like you just picked up and met your friends once again after being away for a long time. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me once again. I had with me today, thank Linda you. Yellen.
Jill Eikenberry, Barry and Patricia Richardson. Thank you so much for being with me.